I am presenting some very exciting research. It's a phase two study looking at a drug named selumetinib, which is a MEK1-2 inhibitor in patients with recurrent and refractory low-grade glioma, particularly children. So it's one of the first uh, targeted biological therapies that we're using in children with low-grade glioma. And uh, we're very excited about it because the data is uh, very optimistic. And so we're seeing lots of responses in children who have a particular abnormality in their tumor that this drug targets. And then children who have a diagnosis called neurofibromatosis, which is a genetic disorder and they're often predisposed to developing brain tumors, typically low-grade gliomas, and they've had excellent results. So we're seeing in a group of patients who have failed multiple therapies, close to 30 to 40% response rate, which is um, pretty much unheard of. So we're very enthusiastic. Uh, could you tell us more about the mechanism there? You said it was a MEK inhibitor, and we've heard a lot about RAFMEK and other indications before. Yeah, so it, um, it's a drug. We know that these tumors, these low-grade gliomas, seem to be um, activated by this MAP kinase pathway. And what this drug does is downstream of an oncogene called BRAF is called MEK, and so it blocks the downstream target of BRAF called MEK, and it bo blocks both forms of MEK, MEK1 and 2, and that seems to for whatever reason, um, dysregulate the MAP kinase pathway and lead to uh, tumor regression. Okay. And I suppose the inevitable question there is, what about toxicity? Because they, they will happen. Yes, it's a great question, and it's an important one for us, because so far we've been using standard um, cytotoxic chemotherapy for these children and uh, radiotherapy, and those obviously have acute and late effects. So this drug is fairly well tolerated. Most of the side effects are what we classify as uh, uh, grade one and two toxicities, so they're fairly well tolerated. And the ones that we see commonly are a little bit of nausea and vomiting, some diarrhea. There's some elevation in a blood level called CPK, but it's usually asymptomatic. The ones that become probably the most uh, difficult and are tolerable are rash, so children can get um, a kind of nondescript rash or an acne-like rash. Um, and then also they can get uh, something called perinicchiae, which is a kind of infection or irritation of the nail bed, most commonly in the toes. And those oftentimes will need uh, antibiotics or rest from the drug, and some of those children will need a decrease in the dose of the drug. But even when they've needed to decrease the drug, it seems to still be effective for many of those children. And do you think this could then go on to be useful outside of the low-grade gliomas for children looking at either adult patients or other indications? So um, I'm not an expert on all of those areas, but there are many uh, studies ongoing looking at adult cancers. I believe there's some large uh, colon cancer um, studies that have recently completed. And we're also looking at it where it's been very effective um, is in that same group of children with the genetic disorder, neurofibromatosis. Outside of brain tumors, they also develop something called plexiform neurofibromas, which are growths usually on parts of their body. It can be um, their arm, their thigh, um, it can be in their orbit. And uh, this drug has been used to decrease the size of those growths, and it's been very effective. And historically, even classic chemotherapy has never really shrunk these lesions. And now these lesions are shrinking and the quality of life and the disfigurement in these children um, has improved greatly. And that's work that's been recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine by Dr. Birgitta Wiedemann um, from the NCI. So that's very exciting. And along with our group of patients with neurofibromatosis, we really feel for many children, but particularly for those children, there seems to be a very specific indication and benefit. Okay, and are there plans for expansion, further recruitment, or taking this forward to another stage of trials? Yeah, that's a great question. So the trial that we're evaluating, there are other arms besides the children with neurofibromatosis and the children who have low-grade glioma with the BRAF aberrations, there are a few other arms. And we recently found out in the last week that those have been expanded because there's been enough responses in the early groups of patients. So even in children with pilocytic astrocytoma, which is the most common type of low-grade glioma in children, who don't have the two most common BRAF aberrations, we're seeing responses. And what that suggests is that even though we're not seeing the most common abnormalities, there's probably other abnormalities in the MAP kinase pathway. And because of that, even though we haven't detected it or looked for it, the drug is effective in those patients. 
We're also looking at a group of patients with not pilocytic astrocytomas, but other low-grade gliomas, such as things called ganglioglioma or xanthroastrocytoma. And that group of patients who have the BRAF aberration when we've tested the drug, they've had responses as well, and now that is recently expanded to include more patients. But probably your bigger question and what I'm most excited about is we're really working with the drug company to start thinking about using this drug as a first-line therapy in children with newly diagnosed low-grade glioma, particularly that group of patients with neurofibromatosis. And ideally, if, if I had my druthers, um, we would uh, do a comparison directly with the standard gold standard carboplatin vincristine, which is the chemotherapy that's classically used, and do a head-to-head -head comparison. And if we can show that it's just as effective and less toxic, it could ideally become the new standard of care. But I'm projecting a little bit, but that's my optimism as a pediatric neuro-oncologist. It kind of comes through. Optimism is a byline at ASCO. It's, it's what we're here for. Yes. Thank <laughs> you.